to the Adirondacks of New York. Now, when most people hear of New York, they think of New York City with the taxi drivers and the big buildings and the Statue of Liberty, but New York is actually a very naturist state. It's um, very large, and in particular, I'm in the Adirondacks. And um, just to let you know a little bit about the area, the Adirondacks is 6.1 million acres, and, oh, there's some ducks right there, they're swimming around. But the Adirondacks is actually home to Lake Placid, which was um, home to the Winter Olympics at one point. But I'm gonna start moving, so come on. So I've been exploring around a little bit. In the area, there are black bears. No grizzly bears, luckily, because those guys are a little more aggressive, but there are black bears, so you gotta be careful um, food-wise. And I've got this nice toasty fire here going to you know, warm my toes. Warm my toes. Now they're all warm. So I did get to some fishing, and I'm actually doing fly fishing. I'm using like um, a large elk caracatus, and I'm actually using the light of the moon to see the fly that's on top of the water. But this is my first ever rock bass. Um, I've never caught one of these guys before. So as you can see there, he's got some reddish looking eyes. Um, he slightly resembles a crappie, but he isn't a crappie. He's not shaped like a crappie is. Yeah, he's got some sharp dorsal fins right there, so just watch it. Big mouth for um, catching big bugs. But yeah, so he's gonna go back into the water. Thank you, New York, for my first ever rock bass. Been hiking a while I wound up in the beautiful state of Vermont and this place is really cool like it's very green uh, there's lots of bracken fern like there was in Washington and in New York it's just a very beautiful state it's full of everything you see here is like kind of grand in its own little way and like if you look down here you can see all the sediment layers of the rocks building up and the water's just rushing through and then there's um, nice peaks and stuff and big slopes with all these big trees and this is actually home to Ben and Jerry's which is delicious ice cream. Just always be cautious when you're um, hiking uh, like off-road, off-terrain and all that because it can be dangerous so I'm gonna keep moving. Okay you guys, so welcome to the great state of New Hampshire. Now, as you can see I am by a very pristine beautiful river. Um, it doesn't get that deep, it's pretty shallow most of the time. If we're lucky we might even get to see a moose. So yeah, but I'm going to keep hiking. My goodness. Hmm. 
don't know, I can't spot it. Hopefully one of you guys will recognize that call and be able to identify it. I've been hiking along this beautiful trail by Mount Washington and if you didn't know Mount Washington is where the highest ever recorded wind speed was and it's over 200 miles per hour which is faster than most hurricane winds are so you don't want to be hiking on the mountain that day it would blow you right off the edge but there's all sorts of cool little things along this trail like ferns and birch trees and this mossy stuff and these little streams everywhere so it's really cool but uh, something that I haven't seen before that I've seen this time is these cool little runoff things now they're just rocks that have been lined up and it's when there's heavy rains it's just to, when the water comes down this way it's to push the water off to the side down into the stream so it doesn't wash away the trail now it does kind of look like a smaller little trail going off to the side but you don't want to go walking on that because it tends to be fragile with loose rocks and um, there is a drop off going down into the river so don't go walking on those but I'm gonna keep hiking upwards and see if I can get a better view of the mountain Okay, you guys, so I've seen tons of these trees already, and this is a birch tree. Now, the birch tree is the state tree of New Hampshire, and one really cool thing about the birch tree is the bark. It's very distinctive. It's like papery, as you can see. It peels off. It's like the birch tree got a bad sunburn, and he's peeling now. But the birch bark can be used for many different things, um, such as canoes, baskets, uh, all sorts of different things, paper. The most familiar thing about the birch tree to me is using the bark as kindling because it's so thin and it's already peeling. Like there's lots of it on the ground, you can just pick it up and it works great for um, kindling in your fires. And uh, you can also use it to make a torch. Hmm, maybe I might try that later. But yeah, so here's a bigger one and here's a smaller one and there's some birch bark hanging from that tree and there's some down birch bark over there but it's just everywhere and it's a really cool um, unique little tree <laughs> okay you guys so we have made it all the way up onto this little peak and we are you can see the white mountains behind me and it's a 1.6 mile hike and it's a steady incline um, a few little switchbacks but not too much it wasn't too steep um, but you had little rivers following you all the way up but it's always good to stay in shape like hiking up these mountains because some people just go online and watch youtube videos of other people doing it or go and look for images but you miss half of the fun of actually hiking up but being in a physical shape can um, ward off diabetes. It can help you to do so much more stuff in life, like go on all these trails and all sorts of things. Keep you healthy, help you live longer. So it's important to be in shape. But what do you say we go get a closer look at what they call Crawford Notch? Uh, believe it or not, this was actually carved by a glacier. Now just look at the sheer power and imagine how big it was. It just carved its way through here slowly melting and moving along. What a day, you guys. I just had a blast hiking up in the, <clears throat> in the mountains, and it was a beautiful view um, on my way back here. Uh, before I crossed the river, I actually got to see a fox, which it was my first time seeing a fox in the wild, which was really cool. Um, I just crossed the river, and there's a little inlet in there, and I had seen a tadpole and one other guy I'm about to show you, but I gotta be careful 
because he is a snapping turtle. Now this guy's really cool little guy, uh, little snapping turtle, little baby, but he can bite. So I gotta be careful, he's got like some dinosaur edges on the back of his shell. Um, I am gonna go put him back in his little pond spot. Um, and after that, I am going to show you something really cool that you can use birch bark for, and that is to make a torch. But the sun is going down and I am going to uh, set up camp and maybe get a fire going. And yeah, I'm gonna go put this little guy back and I'll see you at camp. So I am at a campground. You might be able to hear some noise, but um, I am at a campground in New Hampshire along the river, and it's really cool because people are actually out camping. Um, but it's a cool little base camp to have. Ooh, hello Sparks. It's a cool little base camp to have to explore the area because um, all around there's different places you can go, like trails. But I'm just cutting wood to feel the fire, and in case you were wondering, it was only one match. Uh, what I'm doing is just taking my knife, setting it on top, and forcing it down with the log. It's an easy way to cut wood if you don't have a hatchet. So I can get all these little strips and they work great as fuel once the fire is going um, this well. But I have got my little birch bark torch right here sort of set up. Um, I'm going to finish it off and just explain to you guys how I made it. Just throw these in. And you can really smell how fresh the wood is. It's really cool. It's like pine wood. Uh, it smells really good. And just chop this last piece and throw it in. But here's my birch bark torch. And all I have is a strip of birch bark, like about uh, a foot or so long. And you just wrap it up into sort of a cone shape and it's kind of like one of those little Chinese yo-yo party toy things where you sling it out it's like wrapped up wallpaper or something you sling it out and it goes out into this long cone and then comes back when you pull it back up but yeah so I got that and I tied off the bottom to the stick because um, that little hole at the bottom let a stick enter and I use that as a handle so I don't burn my hand I just pull this down so I am able to wrap it nicely. And the way that birch bark burns, the reason it burns so nicely is because of all the resin in the bark. I just tighten that up a little. And today it was really cool because I got to go to a place called Kankamaugus Highway. And in the fall, people come from all around just to see the leaves change because in New Hampshire, in that area in particular, it's very beautiful. Uh, when the leaves start to change, you got all sorts of different colors. Um, sadly, it's not fall right now, it is summer. So the leaves weren't as pretty, but it was still a really cool area. Um, I'm hoping to see a moose, but uh, instead I got to see a fox today, which was still really cool. And there you have it, folks. A birch bark torch. Now let's test it out. So, um, this birch bark torch is really cool. It's not the best torch, but it is a cool torch. It's easy to make um, and it works pretty well. But I'm gonna go look around at the river and um, head back up to the campfire.
My torch didn't last all the way to Rhode Island, but here I am. It's a beautiful state, um, really rocky coast. I am on the coast of Newport, and I've seen lots of these little snail dudes in these tidal pools. Uh, real cool. But obviously, lots of people like to come and visit this coast. You can see the, uh, some sailboats out there back behind me. And Rhode Island is um, pretty cool because it was one of the 13 first official states. And it obviously has a lot of history to it. But um, hopefully I can get to some fishing because I always love saltwater fishing. Uh, the state fish is the striped bass, which is a very sought after and common fish here because it is uh, very delicious to eat. But there's lots of other fish as well other than the striped bass. There's the robin fish and the blue fish, which are real fun to catch. They put up a nice fight. So hopefully I'll get some new fish that I've never caught before because they are very different than in the Gulf of Mexico. And you guys probably can't tell this, but the algae bloom, like rotting vegetation up here doesn't smell too hot, so maybe I'll make it over to a sandier beach. But yeah, I'm gonna go explore the coast and see what other cool things I can find. clusters like this and uh, they got their hard shells and birds will actually eat them and once the tide comes in and the water's on them then they'll thrive a little bit more. Right now they're all dried up and they're in a defensive position. Oh look, there's a little tiny crab. But yeah, so uh, obviously you can see I'm wearing shoes so I don't cut my feet on them because the shells are very sharp and once you step in the salt water it's not a fun combination to have. But I'm gonna keep exploring and see what else I can find. fishing but it's always fun to at least try in the salt water because there's all sorts of other things that entertain you while you're waiting for a fish but in these little tidal pools um, there's lots of little creatures and the main creature that I find in there is these crabs so while I was in Rhode Island I did manage to catch crabs uh, for some reason I find a lot more male crabs now I'm going to explain to you the difference between male and female so this guy's a little bit bigger and easier to see he's got sort of a Washington Monument looking shape right there, that little patch, and uh, it goes out and it also looks kind of like a baby bottle sticking out right there. And then, the, he's trying to get away. I'll let you go a little bit, just hold on. And then the females, she's a little bit smaller so she's hard to see, but it's kind of like a hill, like a little lump, you know, that same little patch area. Ah, quit pinching me. See right there, kind of like a hill. 
there, that little bare patch. And under that little flap, if you like catch crabs for a living or you go out and throw out your crab trap and you pull them in, under that little flap is where their vital organs are. So a quick and humane way to kill them is just uh, get them, pull up that flap and stab them and they're, um, they're gone, they're dead. Oh, here's another little guy. Oh, he's running. But I'm gonna let these guys go. And see, there they are sitting in the water. Ooh, look, he's in a defensive position. Ah, ah he's pinching me. But yeah, with those bigger crabs, they can get some uh, real difficult, or not difficult, real hard force uh, pushed down on your fingers and it can really hurt. See, all I did was come around and lift up these rocks and look, there's two, three, just right there. That one's female. Oh, that one is female. Most of them I find are male. A uh, bunch of small ones, and every once in a while you do get a larger one. But yeah, it's just a fun little activity when you're having no luck fishing. But even though I didn't catch any fish, I still had a blast in Rhode Island. And uh, I'm getting ready for a beautiful sunset tonight. Uh, it's getting dark out, and I've got to head south. And if you didn't know, south is where Florida is. Uh, I had a blast in the northeastern United States. But I've got to get moving down, you guys. So my ticket out of here is just a few steps or more of that farther. So until next time, you guys, stay wild. Thank you.